you can't get much more Italian than Modena in northern Italy. It's the birthplace of Pavarotti, home to balsamic vinegar, tortellini pasta, and also some of the most famous supercars in the world. The city is nestled in the Emilia-Romagna region, famous for its culinary tradition. But in the tiny back streets of the old town is a three Michelin-starred restaurant that is challenging the way Nonna used to cook. If you are passionate about something, you can transfer the emotion because you can feel it, you live it. With as much oomph and style as a supercar, this is Osteria Francescana. I think the food we create is like a, a, an edible compression of passion. Massimo is a very gentle dictator. The secret is keep a little space open for poetry. My perfect dining experience, I just want it to be unique. I want it to give me something to think about. I want it to be delicious and soulful and thoughtful, beautiful, creative, something that shows me a side of food I've never seen before. Chef Massimo Bottura was raised on the traditional regional dishes that were cooked in his family kitchen. Is that you see? Little pasta filled with uh, pork and veal. So this is uh, the dish that I, I grew up with. But in the small 12-table restaurant he runs with his American wife, Lara, old conventions are lovingly reinvented. Massimo has been obsessed with this idea of tradition and evolution. And Italy is one of those cultures that has combinations of flavors and recipes that get passed down from generation to generation. But you, as a contemporary chef, have a choice. I mean, you're not your grandmother anymore. You are yourself, and you have your own cultural baggage. It's not just about good food. If you want good food, you, can, you could go to my mom's place. She was an excellent cook, and she was cooking beautiful food. But the experience in Osteria is a different experience. When you have a big tradition, you feel comfortable in nostalgia. But if you look at a critic way and you ask yourself a question, like, why do I have to boil the meat into the water? You know, because tradition told me that? You know, it's opening doors. Doors in which I can walk in and uh, see things uh, from a different point of view. Massimo's different culinary point of view can be enjoyed a la carte or from a choice of two tasting menus. At 170 euros, tradition in evolution is a modern twist on regional fare. The sensations menu, 195 euros, is more experimental. By looking afresh at traditional methods and recipes, Massimo celebrates them. There's a new recipe on the menu called uh, riso and polenta in praise of pizza. This dish combines risotto and polenta from northern Italy with pizza and tomatoes from the south. In a country with distinctive regional cuisine, Massimo is challenging perception and history. As fun and ironic as the plate is and as beautiful and flavorful it is, there's also some deep thought going on there. And I think Massimo is really asking you to put your preconceptions of the Italian kitchen aside and look at it from another point of view. It's like a surfer that is on the, on the wave. You know, I'm, I feel like that, you know? I never look at my past. I know where is my past. It's there. It's back there. And I know where I come from, exactly.
But my mind is always on. It's always for the next and the next and the next. It is taking things that people think they know and love and don't want to change and changing them. It is change that's been embraced with evangelical zeal by the rest of the kitchen staff. Our goal is to feed people's minds, take people on a different kind of journey, and help them see things from a different angle. This food doesn't exist just to satisfy people's hunger. Uh, you know, there's you know, tagliatelle ragu down the street, and there's pizza around the corner for those kinds of things. When Osteria Francescana opened in 1995, it was a new departure, not just for fine dining in Modena, but for Massimo and Lara. The day that we opened, I couldn't be in Modena. My dad had just had an operation, so I was in New York with him. And just before opening, Massimo called me on the phone, and he said, you know, in about 20 minutes, we're going to be opening the doors for Francescana. But before I open the doors, I needed to ask you a question. Uh, will you marry me? And I actually said to him, I haven't had a coffee yet. Can I call you back? But I knew that the answer was yes. In hindsight, really, he was asking me to marry the restaurant, which has been my job and my vocation and uh, my passion as much as Massimo's. It's my whole life. It's our life. The restaurant received its first Michelin star in 2002, its second four years later, and its third star in 2012. But the early years weren't always easy. It's been hard uh, because maybe I was pushing too much and I was uh, too much uh, provocating, you know. Massimo in the beginning was very provocative and he really wanted to shake up the Modernese clients who weren't quite ready for what he wanted to do now. Osteria Francescana in Italy boasts three Michelin stars and an avant-garde approach. As well as being a showcase for Massimo's modern Italian cuisine, the restaurant doubles as an art gallery, curated by his wife, Lara. I came to the culinary world from an art background and I was looking at everything through those lenses. Massimo came to the art world through a culinary background and that was a great meeting of minds. If there's one thing that the artwork and the recipes do together is they, they, they have narratives. Lara was the one who introduced me to contemporary art. She's the one who made visible the invisible. This multicolored dish is an homage to one of the UK's most successful artists. So Massimo read an article that Damien Hirst had hung one of his spin paintings in a fast food uh, location in London. You know, Damien Hirst is one of my favorite artists. It's amazing. The title of the, um, the Hirst painting was something like beautiful psychedelic, uh, gherkin pickles, shooting, tomato all over your face, flame grilled. And this was so exciting to him. Fast food, slow food, fast painting, slow painting. What am I going to do with that? What Massimo did became one of the most popular dishes on the menu. Beautiful psychedelic, spin painted veal, not flame grilled. It was a great success. I'm going to keep the, the meat here. I'm going to put the, the red there. Not only was it flavorful and delicious, and the meat was cooked sous vide, so very slow cooking as opposed to the fast food restaurant. It wasn't grilled. So there are all these layers of meaning and metaphor playing on that idea, but there was also this sort of ode to Damien Hirst. There's been a long debate around high-end restaurants as to whether they are art or food. Um, in the sense that good art should reflect the world around us, I think they are on the level of high craftsmanship. What they're really doing is processing ingredients in a new way, and you think about them again. So the very best restaurants will present those flavours in a way that thrill and excite you. 
Earlier this year, art and food came full circle when the artist heard word of Massimo's tribute. Massimo received an email early 2015 saying, Damon Hurst would like to lend you, for your restaurant, a spin painting. You rename the, 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 the title, you retitle the, the sound. So the, the, this uh, beautiful spin painting was renamed like as beautiful sonic disco of love and hate at the gate of hell painting with wicked pools of glorious color and the beautiful psychedelic veal, not flame grill. So that's amazing. Massimo's enthusiasm embraces all of his staff in the kitchen and front of house. I have uh, Lara, I have two kids, but my family is the whole team. And uh, we live uh, this restaurant as it was a family. You know, these guys are part of the creative process because uh, I always ask them to bring their culture, to bring their knowledge and uh, express themselves. Massimo understands the way that uh, we think, each and every one of us, he understands our strengths and our weaknesses and uh, he works with them. We are a group of people that believe in this project, the passion become your life because take 24 hours a day, your mind uh, focus on the on the of the what, what are you doing? Front of house, staff include identical twins, Andrea and Luca. Lara and Massimo, they are uh, taking uh, us uh, as a family. You are actually part of uh, of the restaurant. You are part of uh, this uh, uh, this dream because this is uh, our dream. In the restaurant, uh, we are uh, about 35 and guests are between 25 and 30. So we definitely more uh, employer than guest, but it's very important because we have to give them the best experience possible in Italian style. We stop in restaurants around the world. I think it's the people within have a desire to do great things and to do something amazing that's going to be memorable for the guest. It is a team effort. At the end of the day, it's about culture, and it's about knowing collectively and for every individual what is good and what is bad, and how you're going to get this experience to be fantastic. The team is uh, everything in a restaurant like this. Dishwasher, the guy who's with a great smile is opening the door and say, welcome, or goodbye. You know, that's very important. And if everyone is alert and knows that, the whole team is getting so strong. My favorite memories uh, from this place are, you know, the guys after dinner playing soccer in the rain. Or massive water fights that we've had. Just us really living as, you know, a family, brothers and sisters, and, and we have been able to find a way to work and live at the same time. We've really found harmony for the two. to be a, a great chef, but great chef can improvise. Massimo is a person who keeps you on your toes. When he's around, there is a sense that, you know, you maybe you stand up a little bit straighter and you perform a little bit better. He is a perfectionist and is constantly pushing us forward. He is so volcanic, you know, it's the, the idea of the, the volcano that its explosions are scary, but they're very productive and things happen. Sharing is a very important word. Obsession is another important word. But sharing with the team, sharing with the, 
our small town, sharing with our artisan, cheesemaker, farmers, fishermen. That's the most important thing. Cooking is not just about the quality of the ingredients, but also the quality of the ideas.